Come and get it. Ironically, for a game set in ancient Greece, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is anything but Spartan. This epic scale action role playing game shines as a grand adventure through a magnificent, beautiful open world on a scale we've rarely seen. With so few compromises between quantity and quality, Odyssey vaults over its predecessors to become the most impressive game in the history of the series. Assassin's Creed Odyssey begins more than 2400 years ago, at the onset of the Peloponnesian War. This was a decades-long struggle between Athens and Sparta for dominion over the ancient Greek world. And after an astonishing 60-plus hours of galloping, sailing, and slicing through that historical fiction sandbox, it's easy to see why it was worth fighting so hard over. Odyssey's world is the biggest and most vibrantly colorful of the series. And though much of its playground is blanketed in the fickle blue waters of the Aegean Sea, its playable acreage is only rivaled by its sheer, jaw-dropping beauty. But, as with virtually all grand-scale game worlds, flaws are just under the surface. The immersion is occasionally broken by draw distance, textures that sometimes arrive late to the party, or getting terminally stuck on geometry. Or maybe a lootable item will become unreachable, or your tame beast becomes untamed when you die and reload. The bugs are annoying, sure, but this is still one of the best open worlds I've ever explored. For the first time in an Assassin's Creed game, we get a choice of whether to play exclusively as a man or a woman. Now, they're effectively the same character, though Cassandra's voice acting is more consistent than that of her brother Alexios. And accents throughout Odyssey are hit or miss, usually falling somewhere between good and outright scenery chewing. Is that a yes? Did he say? He sure did, boss. But the facial animation of the marquee characters is superb and you can sense the subtle disgust or confusion on the face of Alexios or Cassandra without them having to say a word. Alexios and Cassandra are easily the most flexible characters in any Assassin's Creed game. As a mercenary, my Alexios was free to be whoever I decided he should be. A merc with a conscience, a one-track mind horn dog, so blood does pulse in those veins. It roars. Or a ruthless murdering psychopath, there are no wrong answers, but there are definitely consequences. I'd never make an arrangement with you. <sighs> You're wasting my time. You need to die! Most dialogue decisions usually don't carry much meaning outside of whether your character is an upstanding person or a total dick. Take this and get out of my sight. Do you think we're farmers that can be bought for beans? Take your money and stick it up your- But some of those choices do affect the greater world around you. Varied side missions become available according to your deeds, and some side characters could live or die, all the way through to the multiple possible endings. I never felt like I screwed myself out of something I wanted to do, but I had the freedom to be who I wanted to be. I was often too lazy or self-assured to hide my murderous ways, which put me at odds with Odyssey's new notoriety system. I initially found the procedurally generated mercenaries who were sicked on me to be little more than loot pinatas. But when they started to show up in force to complicate matters while I was in the middle of sieging a fort, they earned some respect. I appreciate the chaotic X factor they bring to Odyssey, and rising through their ranks to gain the attention of their legendary warriors is a fun metagame in and of itself. Similarly, the New Nation struggle system allows you to help the war effort for either faction in each region. By destroying supplies, pillaging war chests, or deposing a national leader, you'll trigger a conquest battle. While these huge melee or naval battles are thoroughly excellent and reward some good loot, they ultimately don't mean much. No matter who you side with or who wins, the war machine keeps turning. Odyssey continues what Origins started last year, moving combat to a free-flowing dance of light and heavy attacks. The weapons are swords, daggers, axes, maces, and staves, all of which behave just differently enough for meaningful nuance. In the heat of battle, it's an easy-to-grasp system of slashes and skills, and I'm still picking fights just for the joy of it. There's a staggering amount of weapons and armor to find, upgrade, and engrave with powerful perks. It's great that you can make a favorite piece of low-level legendary gear useful in the late game if you pump enough resources into it. But even though I didn't always have the crafting materials or currency needed to upgrade my old reliable helmet to my current level, a constant stream of new viable gear continued to pour in. 
Progression comes from Odyssey's three distinct skill trees. Each holds powerful abilities that can devastate the battlefield, and while I opted to turn Alexios into a killing machine by focusing almost entirely on the warrior tree, I also dabbled in the others enough to pick up archer skills like the head-splitting predator shot and the assassin mastery that made silent kills more reliable. Every skill I chose felt worthwhile, but thanks to the murderous power of gravity, I found the Sparta Kick to be the single most devastating weapon in my arsenal for nearly half my playthrough. The other pillar of combat is naval warfare, which is the best it's ever been in Assassin's Creed. Your ship has excellent options to buff out arrow damage or ramming damage or durability. You can also subdue nearly any enemy to become a lieutenant who augments your ship for a smart sub-layer of optimization. Gliding across the glassy teal Aegean headlong into an armada of pirates, Spartans, Athenians, or even a helpless merchant vessel is something I relish even after so much time dominating Greece's waters. Now I need more obsidian. If you can bring me some, Mystios, my finest blade shall be yours. While side missions in combat are abundant and fun, eventually you're gonna need to move Odyssey's story forward. It's enjoyable, with genuine moments of bare emotion that made me feel for those involved. Its straightforward family drama is elevated by the lack of the tired Assassins vs. Templars soap opera, with enough twists and memorable side characters to keep me invested. At the same time, it's padded out with meaningless errands that make getting to those strong character moments a painstaking gauntlet. Oftentimes, the payoff of a major character reveal had been dulled because I had to spend six hours chasing my tail through half the Greek world to reach it. And even after completing the main story, there's still so much left to uncover that I'm nearly as overwhelmed with where to go and what to do next as I was when I started. Whether I'm hunting down the remnants of the sinister cult of Cosmos, tracking down relics that push the totally superficial present-day story forward, fighting mythological monsters, or hunting the great beasts of Greek legend, there's a staggering amount of content still left to discover. You! You destroyed the Athenian blockade. They were in my way. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a resounding achievement in world building, environment, and engaging gameplay with occasional problems throughout. Its incredible recreation of ancient Greece is something I'll want to go back to long after I've finished its main story, and its excellent systems mesh together in a way that's hard to beat. While there are definite rough edges, Odyssey sets a new bar for Assassin's Creed games and holds its own in the eternal debate over the best open-world role-playing games ever. For more on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, watch us take down an Athenian camp, or check out why the Spartan Kick is so devastating. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN. Ah!